I'm Deanna Kennesell, Director of Texas Leadership Summit. I'm here today with our founder, Tim Webb. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we're going to dive in um, a little bit today about our business pillar okay. and um, explain, you know, uh, how it stands and why it's so important to be one of our four pillars of um, Texas Leadership Summit. Great. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So um, let's just start off, you say, with a business pillar um, that it stands um, for how it stewards life. Yes. So I'm just going to let you just dive in and explain that to I us. love this one because for too long the church has separated businessmen and women from the church as if they are secular and the church is sacred. Uh, Luther addressed this whole issue uh, before the Reformation he, where he acknowledged that all of life is sacred. And what had happened was that because the church... Uh, the pastor or the bishop, uh, typically those were the people who could read. They mm. they didn't have uh, Bibles that were in print for the mass of humanity, those uh, for the church, everyday believer. And so if they wanted to know the word, they had to go to the pastor. They had to go to the bishop. They had to go to church to hear the word. Mm. And so those individuals were in the church considered sacred. And so if you felt led to be a pastor for life or you wanted to serve vocationally in the church, you had a sacred calling. That's where that calling comes okay. from, okay? Uh, we have so many people that say, I'm called to do this or I'm called to do that. And we, we put this emphasis as if the holiness of God has come down and affirmed <laughs> to us this one special sacred way of life. Well, Luther addressed this. He said, you know, as he reviewed scriptures, he um, he addressed this and said, no, all of life, in Christ, all of life is sacred. Okay. And so what we saw, especially as the this age of reasoning and thinking, what we what we saw were scientists. Um, mathematicians, we saw businessmen and women doing things as unto the Lord. We saw this awakening, if mm. you will, of, all, wait a minute, you mean I'm sacred too? You mean because the spirit of Christ, I have the spirit of Christ, I'm in the body of Christ, I am, the church is not the building, it is the people, people. right? Okay, so if that's the case, then what do I do with this life? You mean God? My work matters to God? Absolutely it matters. Yeah, for sure. And so we're we're about advancing the kingdom. And so for too long now the church has separated. And so businessmen and women, you know, just get here on Sunday. Give us your money so that we can keep doing the work of the church and, and go back and make more money. And be in the secular word, world, if you will. Well, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, when we did our business pillar, I started out by apologizing and asked for forgiveness on behalf of pastors in the church to all of our businessmen and women out there who are serving the Lord faithfully. And they're passionate about their businesses. There are people who get up and they love their job. They love what they do. And they, they go to work and they should know that God sees their work and it matters to God. And that workplace is an opportunity. If you're a business owner, you definitely have an opportunity to influence mm -hmm. and advance the kingdom and be about the Lord's affairs Monday throughout the week, Friday, or whatever your work week is, but also your employees and, you know, in the stewardship of your business, how can you help your, your employees? How can you help those in your community? And so stewarding life, this whole issue really is, it goes way back, Deanna. This goes all the way back to Genesis. At the rebellion of Adam and Eve, they they um, they rebelled, they sinned against the Lord, sin enters the world, and we go down this trail, they deserve judgment, it's delayed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they go out, they're, they're taken out of the garden uh, for their protection, and they begin to multiply. They begin to be fruitful and multiply. And the seed of the woman, the seed of the serpent, what we see happening there is there's enmity, great enmity is placed between the two. And we have those, this remnant, as we follow the story along, we, we see those who begin to call upon the name of the Lord. And they're looking for the Messiah to come. And we're following that genealogy. But then there's the seed of the serpent. And what's the seed of the serpent doing? Team Satan. Well, there are those who, instead of going out and being fruitful and multiplying and, and waiting, looking for the coming Messiah, they decide, now this is right after the flood, uh, they decide to build their own city, 
and make their name great. Mm -hmm. You remember the story of the Tower of Babel? Mm -hmm. They all spoke the same language. And so they wanted to develop who they were. They, uh, we see the first great uh, false religion really taking off. We don't need God. We can aspire to the heavens. And so we see this build our city make our name great. Now, what is interesting is that we have people in the church today that take that same mindset. They forget that this is about advancing the kingdom, that there's only one king. There's a dictatorship coming. He's going to return. Mm -hmm. And this dictator, though, is one who is all loving, compassionate, merciful, uh, slow to anger, um, he is so good and gracious, and he is going to establish his throne on earth. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. So with that, we're looking forward to that as the church. So in the meantime, how I endure and how I live my life should be for the advancement of this king to his glory, right? Absolutely. Not the elevation of my name, right. not the elevation of my uh, kingdom, and unfortunately, we have pastors that uh, in order to, they, they have great intentions, their motivations, hey, we want to get the gospel out. And if we have more resources, we can, but what happens typically is it becomes about one personality, um, the building, the buildings and the campus, and it's focused, the focus is turned in on that. You remove that one personality, leader of the, the church, what typically happens? division, scatter. Yeah. And so that's why what we want to be about in leadership, uh, TLS, we want to be about um, empowering the everyday leader with this um, courage, tools, and hope to ignite a, a revival of Christian leadership. We want the advancement, the growth development of all leaders from moms and dads on up um, to be able to steward this life. And so our businessmen and women are vitally important to this. Um, and so we're not to be using their gifts to do something else. We are saying, hey, you're a part of the team. We're all on the same team, if you will. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so define stewardship. Well, stewardship is something that, okay, so it simply means that I, what I have, I don't own. Okay. And I am to manage I am to grow it. I'm to utilize it in a way that is for the best interest of the one who does own it. Okay, so uh, if we say that the Lord owns everything, everything. Mm -hmm. then and I even belong to the Lord, then all of this stuff that I have, it, it doesn't belong to me. Mm -mm. I, I can fool myself into thinking it does, but uh, when you breathe your last breath, uh, you go in the box and all the stuff goes in the here. box and stays here <laughs> and another box and someone pulls that box out, they open the lid else's now. and someone else is playing with your stuff <laughs> no. uh, and you have no control over it. Uh, so uh, someone else owns this stuff. And so we have deceived ourselves in thinking that we own it um, and that we can control it after we die by saying you're required to do this, whatever. Uh, we're simply managing what God has entrusted to us. Every breath, every thought, every action, this body. Um, if I, you know, if our leaders woke up and said, Lord, how am I going to steward this life and the mm. things you've entrusted with me today? How am I going to steward these things? How would that change? What can I do for the betterment of others? What can I do to advance the gospel? What can I do to be a blessing to the people in my church family, my care group, my small group, my Bible study? What can I do? Uh, definitely as a parent, we know this, mm -hmm, it is sure. very sacrificial. Okay, Lord, when I get up today, how can I pour into my spouse? How can I, if I'm a single parent, how can I pour into my kids? Uh, how can I join in with my larger context of family? And then beyond that, I try to tell our, our families here in our church, uh, I try to encourage them to say, if we can't do it in the context of our immediate family, this stewardship thing, if I can't do it in the context of my immediate family, how am I going to be able to do it beyond, beyond in the church family, mm -hmm. our extended family, church family. And so we need, this is a great training ground in the family, the context of the family. So there are those who said, well, you should have a family pillar. And I'm saying the church 
sustains life. And church is where we find the truth for marriage, for family, and all those things. So let's don't create something separate outside the church. That's where we find how to sustain life. And, mm-hmm. and so it all works together. But stewardship, I'm simply managing the things that belong to someone else. That God has given us. That God has given us, entrusted to us. So we're kind of, um, this just kind of came to me while I'm sitting here listening. We're really trying to encourage business owners and then even people that might not own the business, but maybe Mm -hmm. they run a team within the business, that sort of thing, Mm -hmm. that the true CEO and the true boss is the Lord. Oh, absolutely. So we want to wake up and ask yeah. him, like, what are we doing with our company? What are we doing with these right. dollars? How, what direction right. are we going? It doesn't have to be a Christian company, per se, mm-hmm. but we want to have the Christian values within it. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to be selling Bibles is what I'm trying right, to say. Right, you know, right. when I say a Christian company, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't have to, you know, be singing, selling praise and worship you know, music, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It can be an everyday business that is needed for all of us to go to, but we're looking for those Christian values in there. And how can you empower your employees and encourage them um, in a biblical way as well? Mm -hmm. Well, you're absolutely right. Um, The Apostle Paul, I'm going to go back to the Word. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul would say several times, different locations in scriptures, uh, he would talk about that you're to no longer steal but you're to work with your hands, not only to provide for yourself, but also so that you'd have something to give to someone in need. Mm -hmm. He would tell the church of Thessalonica the same thing. He who does not work does not eat. Mm. So the issue of entitlement or the government raising, rearing, Mm -hmm. and and feeding, and that's what the church is supposed to do. And so we allow the government to take this role from us, the church, and say, oh, yeah, we're good with the government doing this. You know, instead of us showing kindness, mercy, compassion, the character of God, instead of the church and the everyday believer, leader, uh, demonstrating what that looks like, we said, yeah, well, we'll just give a little more money to the government, and they can they can be the church. Well, mm-hmm. what are we talking about here? So um, I, I don't know if that mm-hmm. quite answers that question or addresses what you were talking about, but um, that's that's what we see happening. So what are some um, opportunities business owners or those, you know, that have leadership positions within mm-hmm. businesses, um, some examples of things that they could do with their employees to advance the kingdom? That's a great question because this ties to what we were just saying um, earlier and they, they kind of they kind of go together and just to kind of complete the thought, if you will. Um, so I have a business man, businesswoman, they own their company. Um, okay, how can I be a steward of Ants of Kingdom mm-hmm. uh, with my company? Um, I, one way that in which you can do that is just provide a culture to grow faith, uh, your employees? Do do you provide opportunities? Do you encourage them to grow in their faith? The culture of the office, what is that like? Do you uh, develop your people? Do you have this culture where when, when you come to work here, we know that you may not stay for your whole life, mm-hmm. but as a godly business uh, we want to make you better by the time you leave. What are we doing to pour into the our people, if right. you will? And so just the culture of your business, does it give the glory to God? Does it acknowledge that Christ is the head of the church and you are members of his body? Are you afraid to use that kind of mindset culture in the in your business? Are, are you afraid to basically live out your faith? with what you own. And so that can be a radical shift. Uh, we have a, a local businessman who he, this got a hold of him. He said, man, I can't, I can't ignore this. I have been using my business for my own selfish gain. I want to create a culture within my business that glorifies God. Mm-hmm. And I want to develop a team that they know what we're about. And so that was a radical shift for him. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was definitely radical uh, for his family 
to see that happen. Okay, so the culture, you can also um, develop teams within your business. Okay, how can we come up with some community impact mm-hmm. ideas? That, how can yeah. we impact our community in a great way? Uh, it's not, again, you mentioned selling Bibles. It's not that your company goes out on the corner and you're handing out Bibles. That's not what we're talking about. How can we impact our community from our faith to help improve? How can we present solutions to problems within our community that are that are driven by the Word of God and the character of God? And just formulating those teams and opportunities to be creative with the business. Uh, there also draw job training. You know, we've got uh, a huge need right now for skilled labor. Yes, trades. People just don't want to work anymore. Mm-hmm. So the skilled trades, you know, you're trying to find contractors that can do the work. Yep. Okay. And so now we've we've had this major shift in society that if you're going to make something of yourself, you need to go to college. Well, that's produced a lot of debt, a lot of crisis situations for families. And so now we are short, you know, the welders, the electricians, the plumbers, the carpenters. And there are young men and women who have gone that route with the trade, the skilled labor. And they are doing very well. <laughs> very well. Financially. I mean, pretty much right out of right the out trade of, school. And yes. some of them are doing it while yes. they're going to high school. So then as mm-hmm. soon as they graduate high school, they're out there making what a lot of these kids that are coming out of college aren't mm-hmm. able to even do. So, right. yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great opportunity. So uh, job training, uh, what better way to produce employees that will advance your business? for the glory of God, than to bring young people in and train them, equip them, yeah. establish them. What we want to look for is the character. If I can find people who have a strong work ethic, who have character, godly character, they they uh, show up on time, they, they're willing to do their part, they don't make excuses when they make mistakes, they own their mistakes, they say, yeah, this is how we learn. And so we apply ourselves and say, hey, would you help me work through this? How do I navigate through this? Uh, teach them how to ask for help, uh, not to be afraid, and just not to be afraid of correction and growing and discipline, which is the Lord says he disciplines those he loves. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to love our people, if we're going to love our employees, what better way than, and again, part of that culture is how can I produce this culture where it is safe to say, hey, you know what? I thought I knew how to do that. Uh, you have strong work ethic, but apparently I don't know how That's to huge. do that yes. or I made that mistake. So how do I keep from making it again? Right. Right? That's huge because most of the time if we speak up in the workplace, we're admitting defeat. I can't do not something. Good we're not good enough. Mm-hmm. And so then, hey. I've got to lie. I've got to cover. I've got to make excuses. That's not what we want. Mm-mm. So we want leadership that is able to grow people. Now, that may cost you more as a business person. As the owner of the company, it may cost you more. Here's what we know about leadership. Leadership costs. I want to stay on focus with the stewardship pillar, but I want our our listeners, our viewers to understand leadership costs. Either that leader will pay the price for great leadership, do the homework, do the work, apply themselves, um, or the followers will pay the price for failed leadership. Mm -hmm. Either way, somebody's going to pay. pay. Somebody's going to pay. Either the leader or the follower. Now, what do we want is uh, godly, biblical, Christian leadership. We want them doing the work a hard work, uh, and it is hard being a leader. It is a very lonely place at times. Uh, when you find yourself standing there and you're the one having to pay the bills or cover the costs, the expenses of your business, um, or you're you're the one in the church, the pastor or the leader in a church, and and other people aren't getting it. They're they're not stepping forward. They they're they're not walking in the ways of the Lord. And you're sharing the word. You're sharing the word. And you're going, well, I don't they get it. Why don't they get it. We forget that we do have an enemy. Mm-hmm. We have an enemy who is about deception. He's about deceiving and destroying and destruction and death. And, and he wants to take God's people and he wants to take their witness for Christ. And he wants to use that to shame Christ and not glorify yeah. Christ. And so it does cost a leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard work. And, uh, but when we, when our motivation is out of love for our savior, look at what he did. Look at the price he paid. It cost him dearly. Absolutely. Why should I not expect 
just the same. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we talk about steward. Again, that comes kind of full circle here with this stewardship and in making it about my life. It's not my life. How do I steward this life that has been trusted to me for the king? And so um, community impact ideas, job training, uh, the culture in the business, um, uh, there's multiple factors in that. And so I just want our people our leaders to begin thinking, okay, yes, I need to make a living. Yes, we were looking for prosperity with this business, but what do we, how do we steward that wealth? How do we manage it? Make it more about for the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. the kingdom yeah. about me. You know, yeah. With some, I went to um, an entrepreneur, um, faith based entrepreneur group last week, a meeting, and something that they said that really stood out to me, which kind of wraps this exactly mm-hmm. what you're saying is that um, your employees might not step foot in a church. I mean, ultimately that's our goal. We want mm-hmm. them to, but you know, you have all walks of life that are in your business. You might be the closest thing to them hearing the word mm-hmm. Absolutely, because they might not go to a church. So you live your life according and have the business culture to where they then go, Hey, I want to go to church or I want to know more about this. Uh, I, I, Living by example. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you, yeah. but you, you're really striking a nerve here. <laughs> <laughs> so you said go to church. What, what I would love for our businessmen and women to understand, you are the church. Right. Okay, That's so what, what they were if we, saying. <laughs> what if we framed it this way? What if we framed it this way? What if we said, you know, because we are the church, and the way we live our life Monday through Sunday, the whole every seven days a week, the way we're living is that we're extension, uh, we're we're living out our different. faith yes. in the workplace in everyday life. And these people I'm interacting with, they're seeing my faith, they're hearing about my faith, uh, we're having conversations about faith, and we're walking this out throughout the week. And then we just say, hey, you know what? Not I go to church with me, but hey, we worship Jesus. Sunday at nine o'clock mm, and ten forty five. We good. serve other people. We gather together and we worship. We take some time out of our week and just we we sing songs to glorify the Lord. We have some time in the Word to get strengthened and refocused, and we we get caught up with other brothers and sisters in the faith. And it's just a great time of fellowship. And then we continue that fellowship in other ways throughout the week. What if we framed it that way mm-hmm. again? What Luther said. Secular versus sacred. No, all is sacred. sacred yeah. So why don't we move that sacred, you know, that sacred time of going to church? What if we move that sacred moment into the week, and then see what God does with that? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be amazing? We have some great conversations <laughs> in the workplace. Not not that we're cheating our employer from our time on the clock. That's right. not what we're talking about. We're talking about the conversations coming and going as we're doing life along the way. You know, and it's not about shoving it down people's throats either. Oh, it's no. about sharing it in a way of mm-hmm. more of a testimony and the walk your mm-hmm. your everyday walk and them seeing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That it just walking it every day and not just living it on Sundays. I, I hope this is coming together that people are seeing what we're talking about as we focus on these individual pillars because they have the creativity. I, I don't have to give you a methodology. Right. Okay. So. You have been entrusted as a steward. You're a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. You've had your own businesses and you've done well and you've applied your faith. Uh, You have the creativity. You have the opportunity as as you're walking out your faith and be encouraged with other brothers and sisters. You know, how can we collaborate? The businesses. Right. How can we collaborate with another business? How can we pull together and, and so work together? You know, so I know there's healthy competition. And that's okay. <laughs> uh, so, but I think it's just a great opportunity that we have in front of us, like never before. In this age, with the technology, social media, uh, the church has a great opportunity. As chaotic as it seems, as wicked as the world seems, and it is, uh, the devil's been devil's been running the nations for centuries. Mm-hmm. Um, but even so. We have a great opportunity right now, like never before, to be the church. Yes, yes I love that. 
Okay. Anything else in closing, or are we? I think that's good. It up I think good? that's good. I, I think we, yeah, we hit the nail on the head on that one. <laughs> I would, I would love for our, our listeners, those who are, you know, checking this out and engaging with us, I'd love for them to uh, respond to you, email you, send questions, uh, bring topics to you that mm-hmm. we can address. For and sure. If they have people that they want us to interview or or get on the podcast, you know, and just again, we want to raise this awareness. We want to provide this service so that the church can be the church so that we can ignite this revival of leadership and bring these solutions forward to better our communities and bring well, people and give to us, faith. Also, you know, tell us things that are working. Yeah, How are, how's this working absolutely. in the culture of your business? Absolutely. Let us know. So yes. We'd love to share that with other people and give them other ideas and stuff and um, let us know those wins yeah. um, as they're going and, 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 you know, making this part of their everyday life. That's right. Yeah. So Amen. we love hearing from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I love getting those yeah. emails. So. <laughs> well, thank you for having me today. Well, thank you for joining us. And um, we look forward to seeing you all again next month. And um, reach out to us. Let us know how things are going and how we can help. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.